Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're looking at a powerful new tool that every single game developer should actually consider adding to their tool belt, especially because it is completely free. And what we're looking at today is Explorer from Sound Particles and this is a tool for managing your audio. And as you're going to see from this demonstration, it works extremely well. So I'm going to showcase it right now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to import some files in. We're going to do it on a folder by folder basis to start. And I'm going to show you some of the capabilities of this guy. So I've downloaded a couple of files. These are from an ongoing Humble Bundle. I'll show you that in a few minutes, and I'll link it down below. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, the Folly effects. So we got a number of uh, footfall effects. It's going to go ahead, locate them all. There's 296 of them, and it's going to import it in. Now, this is creating your own local database of sound files, um, and you can have multiple databases if you wish. Now, I was going to show us that it's got a couple of errors here. That's actually on design. There were some JPEG files and PDF files in those folders. It's obviously smart enough not to grab those as well. And then what it did is it went ahead and pulled all of these in. Now you're going to notice it automatically categorized these as footstep forest. So it put them all in the ambient forest category. So down here, you can see the categories ambient forest. We could go down there and take a look at all of these files that we've just brought in. So it does this automatic detection and categorization when it searches things. And I've only got one complaint with this program so far is I can't figure out a way to add my own categories, which is that's kind of annoying. So it either fits an existing category that they've defined or you're out of luck. I hope they change that in the future, but that does seem to be a limitation. Of course, it could be a user error thing. So now you notice I'm searching here by a given criteria. We can get rid of that at any time. And now what we're looking at is basically all of the audio files available. There's a couple of important things that they're showing you. They show you the brightness of the file, the sound, um, the sample rates, the number of channels, how long it is. You can obviously sort by these things. So we'll grab one of these sound files. I'll do one of the short ones here. So just pick it and it will automatically load it up down here. You can obviously play it and see a sample of what it sounds like right there. Uh, you can also see what spectrographic view of the sound file as you're playing it. Uh, and then uh, now that you've got this sound file here, there's quite a few cool things you could do with it. First off, we could put it on loop mode and we could do uh, real-time pitch and gain changes to it. Like so. And like so. And I don't know why that stopped it from playing. So uh, you've got real-time controls over here. Let me turn that off. And then on top of that, there is a lot more neat stuff you could do. For example, I can do, uh, let me go ahead and select all of this thing. If I want to change the, the uh, fades of this thing, I can grab this control right here. We can move it in like so. We can pick the amount we want to fade off like so and fade that sound effect out. Uh, we can also go ahead and use predefined curves. Um, so there's a sign based curve, etc. So if you wanted to taper off your audio, you could do it that way. You also have the ability to apply special effects to your audio directly here. So you, for example, you wanted to reverse the audio, uh, you could do so like so. Again, do remember that we do have that fade on it. So that's going to change things a bit. So you've got this simple uh, audio editing capabilities in here. You don't have the ability to do cuts or stuff like that. You're still going to need a dedicated tool if you want to start splicing up your audio, but you've got some neat capabilities here. And also you have the ability to convert things to different file formats. So if you're working with multi-channel audio, which I'll show you in a second, or ambisonics audio, you can... Um, you can convert your files to those. Now I did get some crashes when I did that. So just want you to be aware of that factor. So now we've got this guy going on. Okay, no filters going here. Let's go ahead and bring in a surround sound example. So let's go over here, downloads. Um, I have an ambisonic file. I'll show you where you can get all of these, by the way, in just a minute. So you can also do drag and drop to bring a file in. It's going to import it normally. And now you notice over here, we've got a couple different options here. So we've got the ability to add playlists. I can pick any song I wish. Oh yeah. So bye. Uh, I can pick any song I wish over here and I can add it to a playlist. We can also, by the way, have uh, multiple databases. So if you want to have, if you wanted to have like sound effects in one soundtracks in another, you could do so and switch between them up here. You've also got the ability to see the actual file source file format uh, folders where these things came from. So you notice uh, for these footsteps, we've actually got an MP3 and a WAV file format version of each. If we want to just look at the uh, mono, so single channel uh, WAV format versions, we can filter it down by the original file folder structures over here. And then over here, we can do it by the audio con content. So if we want, we just want to have the WAV files, uh, we can filter in just WAV files. Now, what I'm going to do is filter down to just the Ambisonics. Now, Ambisonics have multiple different channels. So I go ahead and play this guy. And what you're going to see 
is we now have the four different ambisonic channels all available down here. This is of a car squealing its tires. So you see they're all a little bit different. Uh, you can edit each one accordingly. Again, you do have the ability to chain in special effects, or we could go ahead and do a normalize uh, on the entire waveform. Uh, you've got uh, different options here for displaying uh, how long something is going to be. So you've got different tracking mechanisms there. If you want, you can still play this guy down to how it would sound in stereo. That option is always available to you right there. The other thing you can do is you could work with like 7.1 audio. So go here. We've got a 7.1 and a 5.1 example. Now I'm going to drop this in. Like so, so we have another example here. So that's imported in, we're good to go. So we'll get rid of that filter here and we'll instead filter by 7.1 audio sounds. And now we're gonna come in here and you're gonna see you have all seven channels of your 7.1 audio. So if you're working with some very advanced sound files, um, it all handles them down here. So we're gonna go ahead and hear this one. This one is a simple file, it goes one, two, three, four, to show you each channel. And I'm gonna show you what happens when we play it. One, two. two nothing because I'm playing this on a stereo system right now. I've got headphones hooked up. So if you have an audio 7.1 setup going on here, uh, this will show up. you'd hear all of the channels independently. And then what we can do here is actually I could come down and mix it down to stereo instead. And now when we listen to it, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Now, obviously eight. that's not ideal because what you did is you One, mixed uh, the three two. and the four, which kind of came concurrently down to the single channel. So it's not always ideal. Uh, the other thing you've got the ability to do, so here's your left, right, center, uh, at your various different channels. Uh, you've actually got the ability to turn them off. So if you don't want to hear the left surround rear, you can turn that off or you want to hear just it. Uh, we could select just that particular channel. Uh, and we should be able to play that sound there. So if you're working with surround sound, this is a very neat little program in that regard. Um, oh, so that actually didn't play unless I, I play it down to uh, stereo format. So anyways, uh, you do have some really cool controls over how things work. Uh, the other thing that you're going to find is sometimes the auto categorization doesn't work as well as you want. So I'm going to go ahead up here. We'll get rid of the 7.1 requirement over here. I'll do an import of folders. Uh, let's do one more. So I've got a selection of, oh, we'll do some soundtracks. So here we'll bring in the MP3 format of this soundtrack. Go ahead, import it. Again, it goes through, finds everything, discards the non-appropriate stuff. Um, and then you'll find it showed up down here somewhere. Now I do wish there was a category for just imported so you could easily find things because uh, sometimes it's a little bit on the tricky side, but those all came in under really weird categorization. So, uh, so example here, you got, they came in under evil. Uh, now the cool thing here is um, you can actually come in. So if I want to search for dark fantasy, I can search for dark and we're going to get just the dark things that make sense. Uh, then you can see here, we got some of these stuff into uh, categories I may not have wanted. So for example, all of these ones were kind of random because I tried to figure out what they were. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click them. I'm going to change the category and then we'll move these down to say, and this is where it doesn't, the categories don't work as nice as like musical song and phrase. It's a weird category, but that's where I'm going to put my soundtracks in. And then once we come back over here, you're going to notice once again, we'll get rid of my search criteria. So you can search in a category as well. So for example, I come into here uh, and I want to search for just track number 26 and then boom, we're going to get it accordingly. So uh, nice functionality in that regard. And again, at any particular point in time, you could come down here and drill down to the folders where you originally imported them. Now, these things are being imported into a very specific folder for you. Uh, those are being set right here. So the, um, oh, actually, no, I guess the import stays as the raw file. They're only being exported out to these particular formats. I'll get to exports in just a second. On top of that, you've also got some fine-tuned hardware control. So if you are working with binaural monitoring, you've got options over here. Base management setup, all available right here. Your ambisonic decoder output bus controls. Um, and you can, I think you can make some tweaks to it right here, but you can set up how those will play. So you can see uh, in this example where I played my 7.1, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, play all of those channels on the right side of my ear or whatever. So uh, you do have control over the hardware at a very nice level. Uh, so just to be aware that that's there. Again, you also do have the ability to do multiple databases. Um, you've got the, the FX features over here. And then ultimately when you are done, uh, you can export out. So you can export it just as it is. Or what I can do is say export as, 
and then we can go ahead and we've got multiple different options. So what the nice thing with this is it kind of turns it into a Swiss Army knife tool. You can bring in all of your files into one format, but if you need to export them all out, you can do them all. If you want to bring them all out as FLAC or WAV files or whatever, uh, you can bring them all out that way. You can also resample them all in the single time. You can change how the channels are exported when you do so. Uh, you got a variety of different options with how your exporting works, but you do have the ability to export. You also have direct integration into a number of DAWs. So over here, you can see I can automatically spit it out to, well, Sound Particles is their particular tool, but Pro Tools, Reaper, and Nuendo. And you got a couple different options when you are on the Mac side of things. So again, this is a completely free tool. And uh, again, if you're just managing sound, so if you just want something to like organize all your sound files to give you a search engine over top of them, categorize them. It does that perfectly, but it also does a lot of little things that you may need to do. So again, if you need to normalize your audio, you've got the option down here. You can normalize that way. You want to have fade curves. You can change them and edit them this way and then export it out to your engine of choice. By the way, you've also got the ability to export out just the selected bit that you're currently tweaking. So if you want to just grab a little export or chunk of an audio file, you can do that and bring it out here and spot it to it out like that. You got the ability to take files and play them in various different uh, bit depths. And, and like, so again, we go mono, we've got a variety of different um, surround sound systems, including up to 12 channel IMAX audio file formats, uh, ambiosonic file formats. We saw both of those in action. And again, you should in theory have the ability to um, export out. So let me just remove selection. You should be able to export out to say 5.1 surround or whatever. I've got the ability over here, convert to multi-channel, let's say 5.1. Now this generally has um, been, oh no, it worked perfectly in that case. This is the only thing I have experienced crashes on in this. So really a great utility. You should definitely consider adding this to your um, your toolbox of tools. It's its quite powerful in what it can do. The only thing I'd like to see, again, it might just be me being an idiot, but I don't see any way to add your own categories in here. Now they have a lot of categories, but it would be nice to be able to define your own. You can of course create your own playlists. So um, I could create a playlist. Yes, yes, okay. I could create a playlist. I can add multiple sounds to it. I can add them into that playlist. So if you want to just organize things via playlist, you've got that option there as well. By the way, you also have the ability to apply ratings to things uh, and search by the ratings. You've got uh, the details of a sound over here. And again, you can change the categories. We just can't define your own categories, which is, is a little bit on the irritating side. And again, you got these other tools here for filtering down by specific file formats and so on. So I turn off all those filters. You can see here again, I go back to my 7.1 sound example. There it is, my ambisonic sound example. Uh, and then select it. There it is. And if I wanted to, again, take this guy out, I want to convert that instead to a stereo. Boom, I can do it. And then I can export that out in my uh, file format or tool of choice. So ladies and gentlemen, that there is Sound Particles Explorer. A uh, little bit more details about this. It is available on Sound Particles website. So that is soundparticles.com. Uh, if you're interested, they also make a tool called Sound Particles, which is... Uh, a very neat tool for doing um, simulated uh, audioscapes. I, I did a video on it in the past. Basically, you create sounds as particle systems in the world. So you can recreate a city by adding a bunch of, say, pigeons and pedestrians and cars and such. And it does simulation engines for you. It can integrate with 3D scenes, etc. So that is Sound Particles bread and butter. Uh, but they do now have this new Explorer, which is a completely free tool. I suppose I should have mentioned this off the start. It is for Windows and Mac OS. I do not know if it will run under Wine. Uh, let me know if you can get this running on a Linux machine in the comments down below. Uh, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is the free tool Sound Particles. If you're interested, uh, by the way, the sounds that I used in this example, the, the soundtrack tracks and the uh, footprints, etc., cetera, uh, came from this bundle, which is still running for a little while on Humble. I think there's uh, there's eight days left. So if you're interested, there is the uh, uh, big royalty-free game dev music and sound effects software bundle going on. It's a lot of music, but there's also some sound effects like what we heard with the, uh, the footsteps, the spell effects, and so on, uh, are all available uh, in this particular pack. It's an interesting one. I will have a link to it down below. Uh, in terms of the Ambisonic file, I got that from the Ambisonic sound library. Uh, this is available at library.soundfield.com. Uh, it is free CC for buy, I believe was the license. Everything's under. You do need to register. As you can see, I'm Bob Dole, so the registration process isn't really that um 
difficult, uh, but if you want some Sam, um, ambisonic sound encoded files to test out, this is where I got them from. And then for the 7.1 surround sound file, I got it from here, which I will link in the linked article down below. So if you want to check it out and play with some 7.1 sound samples, uh, this is just basically a simple encoded WAV file that shows the multi-channel effects. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. The Explorer app from Sound Particles, it's very good. So uh, if you are managing sound files in any way for your game project or multimedia project or whatever, highly recommend checking this one out, especially because it's free and it's very good. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.